was telling you earlier, we, you know, we go through so much and such, it, it is hard work and tedious work. You're in situ removing the windows and you could spend days chiseling out a window in the sun, 40 feet up in the scaffolding, whatever. And so you're looking at a window in a different way, a different situation, different uh, uh, circumstance. Then you bring it into the studio, you're doing the documentation. You really never get to appreciate the final product until like these windows. We worked on them, we viewed them in the light, they were beautiful, we knew they were beautiful, but when we put them in the light box, which are gonna be in display at the, at the gallery, at Bill, Bill Varaika's uh, gallery, when we turned that switch on in the light box and we turned all the lights off in the studio last Friday, we just all sat there and, and with our mouths just open, we could not believe how beautiful it was, and you're right, that is the payoff. It's discovery of how beautiful the window looks, but also, this is a discovery while you're working on the window. Oh wow, look at this little piece. He used this little piece of, one of the fire journals we worked on actually had emeralds in it. So there's, you find these interesting things, these little uh, discoveries that just make your, your day that much um, rewarding. It's still um, uh, uh, some sort of uh, beauty in, in a way when you you take a uh, when you know you're getting a, a tiff, uh, Lafarge window because uh, uh, and surprise because you know it's going to be a surprise in that window because uh, it's, it, the next we'll do it's a total different thing than the one I shouldn't say total but it's a, a there there are new things that probably he he was uh, invented right there uh, and. Um, and and but I think it's the beauty also for for people like us to discover that. And this was a different job um, for us. Uh, sometimes we do that. That happens more when you completely dismantle a window. All the old light gets discarded. Okay. And then yes, we give it over to someone to disassemble. Someone else would wash the glass. Someone else would relay it. But uh, because this called for sort of more of a, a light touch and a mixture of skills, uh, certain of us would get a certain window and sort of take it from start to finish and confer with each other. And uh, since we did have to cut them apart here and there, and for instance, on this window, this was addressed separately. This section was addressed separately. So we'd have sort of surgically cut them into sections and address each, uh, each area a little bit differently. It, it, it's a, one of the things that was so much fun doing this was the it, just phenomenal, obsessive uh, quest for perfection in these windows. It, astonishing, it, you really don't encounter it as much, the detail work. I mean, pieces of, pieces of glass, a quarter of the size of your little thumbnail. They could barely, I mean, they, they, they look like a pinhead, but they make such a difference color-wise. And that's the kind of stuff you really wanted to make sure was left. So Roberto, I was telling them what a wonderful uh, job that you people are all doing. and uh, We try. I, I told him that you would give maybe uh, and Sister Jane and Sister Leona a little overview of your process first, like what this, you know, what are all the steps sure. associated, and, and then maybe talk a little bit about Lafarge and, and his. The steps his are. Uh, look, I'll go through the steps, the process of restoration, but then we'll go into the studio and you can actually see uh, the different uh, steps um, as they're executed. Mm. But you know, basically we picked up the windows, in this case we picked up the windows from Salva Regina, they were in storage in crates, we delivered them to the studio, and the first step is photography, we photograph everything uh, in transmitted light, reflected light, then the, we go into the documentation, which is, um, we call rubbings or cartoons, it's, you basically take a, a, a print of the stained glass window and the lead lines, uh, so that we have something to a map of how to put the window back together. Mm -hmm. Think of it as a puzzle with mm -hmm. the solution. And uh, especially in windows such as Lafarge, there are so many tiny little pieces of glass and the leads are so small and, um, and uh, decorative that it's important to have as much 
documentation information as possible. And so then once we have the documentation, the photography, the rubbings, uh, the windows get, uh, in this case, which was my um, goal in philosophy from the beginning was to save as much as the original lead as possible mm -hmm. because of their importance. And so Dominic, uh, who worked on the Sistine Madonna, we had to really sit and figure out, okay, well, we have to get to the middle of the figure to repair some glass and re remove the old uh, deteriorated lead. But everything else around it was actually was actually in pretty decent condition, mm. so we had to get to the center of it, to the middle of the window, without disturbing what surrounded the damaged area. So he literally dissected the window in numerous sections, you know, different sections. Uh, I would say seven, eight sections to one oh, side, and there. then the top in three or four sections and the left the left side in three or four sections and then we finally get to the middle and when I say dismantle the sections but in, in, in literally in parts without disturbing the lead mm -hmm. so we had to figure out a way to cut the leads from the center and move it so that we could get to the center without dismantling the good parts. So you could save the lead. So we could save the lead mm -hmm. and we you know we were successful at that mm -hmm. and we finally get to the center repaired the glass put new lead around the center, and then put the we whole thing it. back together. Yeah. And I'm, we're very pleased at the mm -hmm. results. We were able to save, I would say, 85 to 90% of the original leads. That's I think it was five or six years ago when we purchased them, I said, what am I doing? I mean, you know, I saw the plan, I said, these things are a mess, but when I see it now... Well, you see, you get to appreciate a little bit more yes. than... Yes. Yeah. I've been working, I've been restoring stained glass windows for over 20 years, and I know that everybody in and our studio feels the same way. People ask me all the time, oh, don't you get bored, you know, you get bored but you know, with your job or you, you talk to people who work in offices and they're like, oh, you know, I'm tired of my job. I get up every morning and I can't wait to come to work. I don't want to leave at night. Every single project is different and unique. Even the same project, and especially these windows at Salve, every square foot of the window is different. It's interesting, it's, you're learning and it's motivating and it's, intriguing and you just want to work on it and if you really it's 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 really a passion a love and it's it's you're right the discovery throughout the process and the discovery at the end when you turn that light on or you install the window in an opening and you climb off the scaffolding and you finally look at it up in light and that's rewarding just how beautiful it looks mm -hmm.